Ed, Ed, and Nettie is a show that just screams classic Cartoon Network energy. One look at it can invoke nostalgia in almost anyone who watched cartoons in the 2000s. How could you not love the show about these three iconic characters who cause chaos for all the kids in the cul-de-sac? The unique animation is also one aspect I fondly remember. It was one of the last big shows to use cell animation, and the creators intended to replicate older cartoons with the show's style. I also love the character designs. Something about their outfits really makes me think about the 90s and early 2000s. Still, the show is really well-aged and worth watching no matter what year it is. With how popular it was, it had all kinds of marketing. Many might remember The Miss Adventures, which was a pretty big video game made for the show. But let's take a look at some of the online games you could find on Cartoon Network's old website. Like with any of their old shows, there were a lot of them. Let's start with Cul-de-Sac Smash, a relatively popular one. This was made by Templar Studios. When I saw their name, I could have sworn I knew it from somewhere. I couldn't put my finger on it, but after looking into them, I found that they're the same people who developed the Bionicle Matanui Online game. Not only is this extremely nostalgic, but I'd go as far as to say it's one of the greatest Flash games of all time. I have a video on it if you want to check it out. So now my expectations are astronomical. Let's look at Cul-de-Sac Smash. I love the music and the title card. The creators of Ed, Ed, and Eddie cared about emulating the feel of past decades, and I'd say this nails it. <laughs> You then have a choice between nine characters, that's right, nine. The Eds, the Kanker Sisters, Kevin, Johnny, and Rolf. Your character doesn't really make a difference, but it's nice to play as your favorites. You then see you can obtain go-karts which you can repair or sell for cash. Right now, we have Zippy. I love that name. There are three derbies and you can unlock each by winning the one before them. You then control your cart with the arrow keys as it flies in every direction. You have to ram the other characters and destroy their own carts, breaking off one piece at a time until they explode and the driver goes flying. You have an indicator at the bottom of the screen that tells you which parts of your own cart are destroyed. This strongly reminds me of the cart stages in Tack the Great Juju Challenge, which had the same premise. Wow, I'm thinking about Ed, Ed, and Eddie, Tack, and Bionicle all at once? I think I'm overdosing on 2000s nostalgia. What's funny is that the characters all say different things depending on what action they're performing, but they aren't specific to whatever character is saying them. Ed can become uncharacteristically antagonistic. Challenging as it may seem, this isn't actually too hard. I was able to win a few rounds without even really trying. You can just let the others destroy each other and jump in at the last minute. Like I always say, that's how I always used to win dodgeball. I wouldn't say it's easy either, though. It's a reasonable challenge, and it's a lot of fun. Looks like Templar Studios did it again. But this actually has a sequel, which acts as an upgraded version of this. Cul-de-Sac Smash 2 Wheels of Fury has a lot of the same elements, but this time we have special moves. They can make all the difference in a match. You wait for a bar in the corner of the screen to fill, then you unleash it on your opponents. Johnny's is super convenient because he swings plank at everyone surrounding him. This is often the final nail in my enemy's coffin. Rolf also summons goats that are apparently stronger than moving vehicles. I'm not sure I even want to know what those goats are being fed. Victor is one character you do not want to mess with. Now let's check out Clash of the Idiots, something of a fighting game. I'm surprised they didn't call it Cole the Smackdown. Double D is facing off against Lee Kanker in a neighborhood wrestling match. You have to select five moves to perform in a round and hope that they outdo the randomly generated moves of your opponent. You can either attack or heal, and you have to drain Lee's health before she drains yours. The background music is also very clearly meant to resemble Lie of the Tiger. If this seems like a game of chance, that's because it is. It's fine for a short, no-stakes flash game, though. But I could see this really working as a two-player sort of deal. Kind of like poker, where you have to read your opponent and predict their next move. Still, it's amusing for a quick little game. This one is called Dunk and Dine. The Eds have dropped their lunch in the biggest pool in existence, so now they have to swim to the bottom and retrieve it. Don't you think it's kind of a lost cause? Wouldn't it be all soggy? Also, apparently the pool is supposed to look like this, so that makes it all the more humorous when you see how deep they have to swim. You choose an Ed, then you have to collect pieces of food while avoiding obstacles, such as the Kanker Sisters. Hey, why isn't Eddie helping? Some kids in the pool will steal your food if you touch them, and others will drop stuff on you. 
Imagine hating someone so much you drop a trash can on them while they're swimming and trying to find their lost food. Way to kick them when they're down. You also have to go up to the surface for air when your air meter gets low. And once you collect all the food, you still have to reach the end with it. So yeah, this is extremely detailed for how simple of a concept it is. Also, if you press the A button, you just automatically die. Also, when you play as Eddie, your lives are indicated by Ed. Oh, game-breaking flaw, can't even play it. That's unforgivable. Nah, I barely noticed it. Strange as this whole thing is, it's okay. Now this is Ed's over eels, sorry, Ed's over heels. That's hard to say. The Eds are trying to impress Naz by pulling off a balancing act. You have to hit either the left and right arrow keys or the Z and C keys to maintain balance on a rolling object. Occasionally, a friend will throw a ball or a balloon at you and you'll have to keep it balanced on your head. You also have additional objects you have to balance by clicking on them when they start to fall. I had trouble with this because they didn't always respond to my clicks, but I don't know if I just wasn't being specific enough. It's hard to tell. You keep this up until you fill all the dots at the top of the screen. You lose some if you drop an item you're supposed to balance. If you fall down four times, it's game over. To be honest, it's kind of addicting. Not a bad time killer. Now here's a platformer called Infected. A game where we infect Ed with something? No, it's a pun on infected. You don't actually play as any big characters in this. Ed eats a tainted jawbreaker and unleashes hordes of germs into his body. You control a white blood cell and have to kill them. You collect health endorphins to open arteries and move from level to level. You also collect red and blue blood cells for bonus points. Oh no. Please no, don't tell me. This game is... Educational? I'm sorry, I had to. If these titles are allowed to make puns, so am I. We even get a cutscene to start us off. I love how exaggerated the dialogue is. As for the gameplay, it's actually kinda hard. You climb ladders to move from one platform to another and fight germs with your sword. If you take damage... You get to hear that lovely voice. Get used to it. It's very basic, but challenging. You can give it a try if you want to test your skills. I always love a good edutainment game, though I prefer Jumpstart 3rd Grade. Now here's Kart Attack. There sure are a lot of Ed, Ed, and Nettie games about go-karts. I guess it's an easy premise for developers to utilize. You have to earn street cred by winning a downhill go-kart race. Check out the pictures overlapping with the instructions. And as an American, this spelling a maneuver will never not be shocking to me. You can choose to either be all of the Eds or one individually. You then have to collect stars and avoid obstacles while speeding down the hill. It's an extremely fast game and one you have to have quick fingers for. It's a lot to take in, but you can't say it doesn't match the chaotic energy of the show. There isn't much to this one, but it's fun to hit these cans and send them flying. Now let's get on to a big one. This is Lunchroom Rumble. It even has its own title card. Now they went all out with this one. You can choose between 10 characters, but you start with the Eds. All of them have their own stats between speed, strength, and range. You unlock more characters as you complete each round. You go around the school cafeteria with a lunch tray, collecting food from bars and throwing it at the other students. You have to drain the health of everyone else until they're eliminated, trying to keep your own health up all the while. You can collect power-ups that will either give you more health or allow you to perform a special move that freezes anyone it hits. When your tray is empty, you can either wait for more food to regenerate or you can collect more from a bar. You can also use it to shield yourself from enemy fire. You can even push a chair around and use that as a shield instead. The characters include the Eds, the Kankers, Johnny, Rolf, Naz, and Kevin. I find it hilarious that Sarah and Jimmy are constantly left out of these games. I guess they weren't very popular. But anyway, this game is nothing short of amazing. Not only is it really fun, but the details add so much to it. I like seeing the animation differences between each character. For example, Johnny uses plank instead of a tray. It's also rewarding to unlock more characters and see how they play. Naz and Kevin are super powerful, but that makes sense because they're the last ones you unlock. Naz looks a little goofy when she runs though. Oh, sorry, I forgot I was recording footage there. I got a little too into this. Normally, when I say a cartoon Flash game is good, I'm speaking from the perspective of a kid in the 2000s who wants to kill some time after finishing homework or something. This is one I will genuinely go back and play on my own time. It's neither too easy, nor is it too hard. It's really addicting, and if you're a fan of Ed, Ed, and Nettie, you'll get a kick out of how the characters are used. This is easily the best one so far, but we still have a bunch left to get through. Definitely going back to this once I'm done with this video, though. 
Now we have the Ed Touchables. That pun only slightly works, but I'll take it. This one was actually really glitchy for me, and that could be because of the aging technology, but I was able to see some amusing stuff in it. It's a target shooter where you shoot at different objects while avoiding other ones. And Billy from Billy and Mandy is here for some reason. It's very in character for him to leave his own show. Sadly, you can't shoot the people holding the targets. What, you mean shooting people is bad? Aside from that, not much to see here. Another basic one is Toy Twister. We get an animated cutscene where an alien ship creates a tornado. It blows a bunch of toys everywhere, so the Eds decide they can catch them and make money off of them. They do this by balancing Eddie on a big wooden board and catching the toys in a bag as they fall. As your bag gets heavier, you can dump it because it'll hinder your movement on the board. Also, Plank is part of it. This is actually really hard. It's hard to stay balanced and I keep falling over the edge. Also, since the toys are falling in front of you anyway, why not just pick them up normally? I want to say it's because they probably break when they hit the ground, but I prefer to assume the Eds just aren't smart enough to do this the easy way. You also lose money if you catch things that aren't toys. I'm sure there's a market for people willing to buy tires, clothes, and toilet paper though, but this is pretty amusing, just a little challenging. Now here's Spin Stadium. If you ever wanted an Ed, Ed, and Eddie version of Beyblade, here it is. You choose an Ed, then you shoot a spinning top across a board and try to knock out all the other spinning tops. You lose energy unless you hit another top. When you lose, it asks, you dizzy? This is the most insulting thing a Flash game has ever said to me. Battling tops really is a concept that works best in real life. I've never played it before, but I don't think this is the most accurate representation of what a game would look like. But hey, at least this one has your favorite cartoon characters in it. Now here's an interesting one. Guess what it's called? Crackheads. This was only ever released in the UK, and that isn't surprising to me. They would never get away with that title in the US. It even sounds like the way a British person would say crackheads. But this was actually part of a contest to win a backpack. You had to click and hold this button to break a jawbreaker with your jaw. Oh, I won. Wow, didn't expect that. Check out this cool backpack I just won. Guess I can catch toys from a tornado with it. But now here's one made by a very familiar company to us. This is Pop. We've checked out a lot of their games on this channel, and they can either be amazing, or kinda meh, or make you ask why the heck did they make this. It's a gamble. This is Candy Machine Deluxe. You have a bunch of creative pipes, and you have to organize them on a grid so they reach the bucket at the bottom. You can do it the simple way, but you get more points if you go crazy with it. Some of these are funny to use, and I like seeing how the different mechanisms react to the jawbreaker as it rolls through them. I gotta admit, this is really captivating. I kept trying to find all the different ways I could use each device. Even if you lose, you can't help but use as many as you can get away with. Look, I made a whole person out of this robot stuff. Okay, this is Pop. This is actually a lot of fun. Especially since you can unlock more stuff with every bucket you make. I like this one a lot. But speaking of candy machines, this is Candy Factory. A candy machine is mixing up flavors, so Double D has to shoot candies into the correctly colored tubes. If your gun thing picks something up besides a piece of candy, you can shoot it at this cat or at Eddie before he can eat your completed candy. This gets extremely fast extremely quickly, so you really have to work those fingers. It's really hard, but it's fun to shoot at everything except for what you're supposed to. Now, in case you were forgetting about the whole go-kart genre, don't worry, because we still have one left in store. This is Go-Kart Rally. First, you choose an Ed, a car, and a set of wheels. This is kind of a needlessly complicated process, because the other tiles change when you select a certain thing. They also call these the gold, bronze, and silver categories, even though those titles don't really indicate what you're selecting. Not sure why they didn't just go with a traditional selection method, but prepare yourself for the gameplay because this one sure is something else. Well, this is unorthodox. There's no music or really any stakes, just the sound of metal clanking whenever you hit something. Look, I'm about to run May over. Oh shoot, she's made of metal. You move around this fixed background and complete a series of laps. That's all there is to it. I think it's a masterpiece. Far better than Mata Nui Online. Next game. This is Gob Gob and Gobby, which is quite the title if I do say so myself. Same. So the Eds find a plethora of jawbreakers and now they have to catch them in a wheelbarrow that's actually their tongue with a wheel. 
You avoid trash cans and irons, but you collect jawbreakers and move them to a wagon. It's really easy, but whenever you empty your collection, you get to hear this sound. Yum! 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 It's also fun to bounce the jawbreakers off your head. I also like stacking a bunch of things on my tongue. Not bad. That sound effect is just so amusing. But speaking of jawbreakers, this is Jawbreaker Mine. Now that sounds awesome. We don't get any cutscenes, we just have to find the ancient jawbreakers. First, we have to get the flashlight. Okay, that Scooby-Doo sound effect sells it for me. You have some of the strangest controls where you move Ed by hitting one button at a time. You have to specifically time your jumps to get over obstacles, and it's hard to tell how specific you have to be. Then you lose and see this screen that says, Sorry, you are out of lives. This is one of the stranger games of the bunch. There isn't much to see here either. Let's move on to something bigger, such as Nightmare in Space. This one has an opening cutscene. The Eds are up to some shenanigans and Double D passes out. Now you're in his dream and you have to find your way back to Earth from space. You control what looks to be a sticker of Eddie in a rocket as you shoot at objects and collect upgrades to shoot bigger things at objects. You have to find your way back to Earth without running out of health. The objects are easy enough to avoid, but make sure you don't hit, you know, the bottom of space, because that also takes health away. As we all know, whenever astronauts go up into space, they have to be very careful to avoid crashing into the bottom of it. It's not like the universe is infinite and never expanding or anything like that. This isn't too bad, but it's hard to tell what items are collectible versus which ones hurt you. I also love the game over screen that says, unfortunately, you are lost in space. Ugh, I hate it when that happens. Now here's Sewer Rat Balloon Bash, and the award for most interesting title goes to... You have to lower Ed into the sewer to collect bottles floating down a stream. You have to avoid rats that can damage you or steal your bottles. You have to keep your strength up too, or else you fall in. I love how the instructions say Ed is only allowed a rest when he collects a bottle. It's really simple and just something to occupy time with. But listen to the sound Ed makes whenever he gets hurt. Ow! Hey Homer, they have duff bottles in the sewer! So now there are only three more I'd like to check out, but before we get to the really big one, let's check out one that's 3D for a change. This is Bold Over, stylized as Bull Ed Over. Bold Over! This was made by Skunk Studios, a fairly reputable company known for their sports games, mostly bowling ones. Longtime watchers of me know I'm attracted to those like a moth to a light. Ironically, I am terrible at bowling in any capacity. Seriously, if you go out bowling with me, I'm guaranteed to land in last place. I'm the perfect friend to go out with to make yourself look good. To start off, you choose a ball. They have different stats, so you can fool around and see which one works best for you. You roll them, then you use the mouse to control where they go. You hit as many pins as you can, and yeah, it's bowling. The Eds keep making comments about everything the whole time. Hey, you got one! <laughs> Well, you stunk worse than Ed's stinky underpants! Stay alive! See, now that's how I bowl! Uh, my tummy hurts! I know squirrels that bowl but Keep practicing! <laughs> that's funny. This strongly reminds me of Polar Bowler, which makes me so nostalgic I almost want to cry. Aside from that, it's bowling. Bowling with the cast of Ed, Ed, and Eddie telling you how bad you are. Amazing. But now we've reached the final stretch. This next game isn't actually a Flash game, or even an online game necessarily. Like with my Kids Next Door video, I think it's best we wrap this up by looking at the games made by Denki for Sky GameStar. If you don't know what that is, it was an interactive TV service in the 2000s that you could use to play games on your television. You'd use the remote instead of a game controller. Denki made a lot of games for them based on cartoons, and they're usually pretty good. While this service is a thing of the past, most of their games are still playable online. So let's see what they cooked up for Ed, Ed, and Eddie. This is Night of the Living Ed, which makes it sound kind of like a horror game. The intro is pretty random. Ed just transforms into a monster in the middle of this garage and runs out to unleash havoc. It looks like his design is inspired by Edzilla, which makes for a cool tie-in. So now you control Eddie and you have to stop him. If you read the instructions, you get a comical dialogue between the characters. Apparently Ed's taking his Halloween costume too seriously and genuinely thinks he is a monster. He's throwing up half-chewed chunky puffs and trapping kids inside them. So Eddie agrees to save the kids as long as they pay him for it. 
You collect jawbreakers and rescue both characters from the show and generic kids who are trapped in the Chunky Puffs. You also meet Double D, who sells you upgrades in exchange for jawbreakers, so you'd better be collecting every one you find. You can also search trash cans to find all sorts of things hidden inside, though it is kind of disappointing when you're looking for something legitimate and you just get a jawbreaker in one of them. You're looking for keys you can use to open gates and move into different areas. There are also enemies moving around, created from the Chunky Puffs. They aren't too hard to take down as long as you have any sort of weapon. Once you move into a new area, you're given a code you can enter to continue wherever you left off. The further you travel, the harder everything gets. The enemies get more challenging, and you need upgrades such as stronger weapons and spring shoes to maneuver through some of the screens. Occasionally, Ed will come by and ruin your entire day. In some later stages, him joining the screen can actually put you in some inescapable predicaments. For now, you can just leave the screen and come back to make him go away. The weapon you want most is the can, because it can explode and destroy a good few enemies in its range. The chunky puffs that take a few hits to go down can be some of the hardest ones to deal with, so it's handy to take them out from afar. Also, if you fail to rescue a kid in time, they turn into a big green monster and chase you. One hit turns them back to normal, though. In some situations, it's actually better to let them become a monster before you save them. But the worst enemies are these tentacles that shoot at you. They're hard to kill, because in some cases, when you're in a narrow spot, you have no choice but to take a few hits from them. And trust me, in these later stages, you do not want to die. If you lose all your health points, you get to continue where you left off. Sort of. You lose all of your jawbreakers, meaning you have to collect them all over again, and all of the kids you saved are stuck all over again. Thankfully, you can travel from one level to another after completing it, but it's an extremely painful process if you have to do it all over. Not to mention, if you find these giant jawbreakers, they give you an extra life slot, but if you die, you lose it. You can collect them again, but I really feel like those should be permanent. The game is fairly simple at first, but it can get extremely hard before you even realize it. And eventually, it can get confusing to try and figure out where you're supposed to go when you reach the later levels. There's a lot of going back and forth, and if you die as much as I did, there's a lot of recollecting stuff you already found. It's still fun and challenging if that's what tickles your fancy. But be ready to give nothing short of your absolute best if you give this game a try. But actually, Denki made another game very similar to this. It's called Jingle Bell Ed, and it mostly follows the same premise. Only this time, Ed is in the Christmas spirit and turns into who he believes to be Santa Claus. He goes around the neighborhood and throws defective gadgets at kids, believing them to be Christmas presents. So now we get the same game as before, but Christmassy this time. It's really funny to see all the dialogue and animation changes made for the holiday season. This time, you have to save kids from being eaten by evil presents. If you don't save them in time, they become evil gift monsters. This is really silly, and I love that they made this. Like before, it can get difficult, but it's still really fun. There was one other Ed Ed and Eddie game made for Sky GameStar, but like with Operation Gumdrop, Clubhouse Carnage has been lost to time. So that wraps things up for the games in this video. Most of them were really fun. Some were kind of strange, but I enjoyed going through all of them. Ed Ed and Eddie is a great show and a piece of television history that many of us cherish. It's nice to replay these games and relive the excitement we once felt whenever we'd see these characters get up to their old antics. I'm sure most people would find these fun no matter what year they played them in. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.